day one, right? Since anyone saw him and you know everything that we do and you know, working in the future and that. And I still get really excited over these cars when I walk in, the colors, the way they sit, the presence of them. And I think that resonates well with our customers too. Hopefully you have a little bit of that too when you walk in. It's like, oh my God, it's so cool. Um, sorry, geeky moment there, but that, that's part of what I you know try and bring to my job, right? As the design guy is that, that passion and that emotional connection that everyone, even you know, everyone in here and our customers have with an automobile, no matter what kind of automobile it is, but certainly, you know, the challenger. And and part of that comes down, to, you know, my philosophy is um, good design is timeless design, and it's about proportion, it's about simplicity. And I think we've done a great job with this with this vehicle and doing that. You know, we don't have to rely on, you know, throwing latest, you know, gimmicks and you know things all over it to try and keep making it fresh. There's a simplicity of the form, a simplicity of the shape of the car that, that just keeps getting better and better. Um, and so we don't, you know, we're, we're just we're evolving that, we're refining it as we go. You know, the, we, the, the wide body flares, there's form and function. Certainly with every SRT product and Dodge product, those have to work hand in hand together. But the flares allowed us to put the wider tire on it. And, you know, to me, a wider tire wheel on any car always looks better proportionally anyway. So it was a, it was a good thing to, again, refine the, refine the car. Um, moving on to the hood, you know, to me, uh, Mopar, there's such a, you know, rich history of shapes, you know, functional pieces. Certainly, you know, our logos and graphics and names that go along with our past. Uh, but but I've started looking at you know what are things that um, you know I get inspired by from from our from our whole car past um, from all the brands and where can we take you know where can we take the hood? Um, obviously the you know the center aqueduct with the extractors um, we've seen that we've used that for a lot of years on a lot of vehicles but we wanted to take it to the next step with it and you know I'm a big fan of you know touching a car and you know having shape you know the customer can when they wash it they feel it they connect with the car sitting behind the steering wheel when you look out looking at the back of a hood versus just you know something that's flat you know it's that that emotional that visceral connection that you have with the car you know aesthetically as well. And as Kevin mentioned, the uh, the hood is actually functional, and both both air intakes take uh, air into the air box as well. But you can see a little bit, um, you know, of uh, of our past in, in the shapes of the hoods um, as well on this. Um, with the red eye, uh, one of the one of the cool pieces to me is and Kevin touched on it is if you know, you know. And we have our, our Hellcat badge. Now with the red eye, we've taken that badge, we've put a, a a, a dark finish on it with a jeweled red eye in it. You'll see that repeat itself on the underhood and the key fob, the, the splash screen as well. It's a very you know, nice and tasteful thing, but our customers know what that what that means and what it's all about. One of the other pieces on the on the, the new Challenger is the, the spoiler. And if you look at you look at you know where we've been in a lot of muscle cars, as far as the shape of the spoiler goes, it's really derived from the from the set from 1970 where it was you know this kind of piece standing up, stuck on the, the deck lid. And a lot of what we do you know, is, is based on wind tunnel development. You know, in conjunction with the front splitter, making sure that the car has the right amount of aero downforce, not too much drag on it. So there's not a lot we can do with the rear spoiler, but what we've done on this one is we've pulled it rearward. It has a little bit of a, a, little bit of a hint of a gurney flip on it, and that actually wraps down for the sides as well. Just changes it a little bit. Um, again, back to refining it and making things a little bit more modern versus you know throwing uh, you know huge design changes at it. Uh, the other piece that's that's new here that this is our what we call the triple nickel silver. I'm a big fan of our history of colors and that. Obviously, as you can see it in here, F8 green and Punk Crazy. Those iconic colors, you know, are from our past, and they still resonate really well with our customers. What I want to do as we go forward is create the next generation of cool colors because I think that's what really helps complement a shape of a car like this. And that this silver uh, replaces our billet silver, so it's a, the next step in, in that, that evolution. Which actually leads me into uh, the, the 1340 that Kevin talked about. We, we have such a great connection with our customers. I love the fact that, you know, I go to car shows on my own, um, not even for work, just because I love it and I love both cars. And I've built some great relationships with people and I, and I learned from that and that resonates through the design studio as well. In March, there is a, an event called Spring Fest in Southern California that we participate in. 
and it's a great way for us to again connect with uh, with customers. And we've done some things with them round tables, but I can never give them what they want. They want to talk about future products, um, you know, things that I can't talk about, obviously. But so we said, you know, let's let's take some colors out there. Let's look at you know what are some future colors. So we took 15, we call them speed forms. Uh, painted them some cool colors that we're looking at for the future and let them vote on the colors that they uh, thought were cool. We actually did the same vote uh, at FCA as well after, and sort of our top five colors, the, the number one color was this color here, which we call black eye. And the idea again is, you know, Plum Crazy's, you know, a fantastic color, but I want to see, you know, where can we go from here? So we painted a full vehicle this just to see it work. We literally, legitimately are trying to get feedback to make sure that um, they still like it for one. Uh, but um, I, I think it's a pretty cool color as well. It looks great in the, in the sun. And just a little bit of touch on the, the, the badge design of the 1320, you know, back to, you know, pulling on our Mopar history, you know, the Scat Pack B, obviously, you know, is an iconic uh, graphic. And what we've done here in the 1320, take a look at it is, we call it the Angry Bee. Um, got a little more attitude. The helmet of it is kind of inspired by, you know, uh, 60s, uh, um, you know, uh, drag racing cars with, you know, vents on it. Uh, the antennas are pulled back. The tires actually wrinkled on it and that. So to me as a designer, is that that piece of um, emotion that I try and put into every single thing that we do uh, that you know, our customers can uh, relate to. So.